-hmm. Now that we're done with the S21 Ultra, put that to the side. Whew. Let's talk about the S21 Plus. If this looks familiar, it's because I've just dropped the Galaxy S21 Ultra's review after two months. Link to it right under that like button. And now, let's talk about the S21 Plus. Straight off the bat, I'm gonna say this. This is one confusing phone, okay? Where it lies in the smartphone spectrum is quite confusing. It's a tad bit above the S21, the standard S21, and it's a tad bit lower than the Galaxy S21 Ultra. It gets confusing. It is the exact same phone from last year, the S20 Plus. Editor heads over here, okay? Quick correction. They're not the same, literally the same phone, okay? Pull up spec sheet on spec sheet and bulk of the specs, 90% of them actually correlate, okay? And differences are gonna turn up in processors because the S20 Plus uses last year's processor, the Exynos 990, while the S20 Plus uses the Exynos 2100. And you know, a bit of changes in the camera, Actually, the only change in the camera section is gonna be the S21 Plus had the thermal flight sensor, while this doesn't. Keep that in mind. Back to the show. Now, if you watched me reviewing the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which I just dropped alongside this video, you should anticipate that reviewing this should be quite easy. And frankly speaking, it is. You've got the same design cues, we've got the camera module that's sticking out that's really the main identifier of all samsung s21 lineup devices this year gorilla glass 7 front and back and you've got a flat screen up front dynamic amoled display capable of 120 hertz refresh rate it will vary refresh rate from 48 hertz all the way to 120 hertz now for the longest time ever far as i can remember every samsung flagship phone was 1440p resolution stock Okay, straight out of the box. Here, it's 1080p. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever I make an upload. Cheers. Before anything else, I should mention that all three phones in this test were up to date. Camera lenses were cleaned, zero edits were made in post, and I just let the cameras do their work with as minimal inputs as possible. The average user won't notice, but for a guy like me, a reviewer who's been on so many phones, switching phones here now and then, side by side, I do notice some pixels missing, okay? I do notice that step down in resolution. Again, it's nothing too wrong, nothing too shabby. It doesn't like disrupt any way that the phone works. And in any case, this here still sports one of the best panels out there. Again, broken record. Samsung makes the best displays out there. Performance wise, Samsung have equipped the Galaxy S21 Plus with the same Snapdragon AAA chipset or in other regions of the world, the Exynos 2100 chipset. Performance-wise, they hold up pretty well. And as I mentioned in the S21 Ultra review, Samsung have really worked on the Exynos lineup of chipsets to a point where there's quite a tiny gap between Snapdragon and Exynos. And in some areas, some cases, in some tests that have been done, Exynos is actually at par or even better than the Snapdragon variant. Again, to keep the price down, they did have to shave and trickle some features down, dial them down. For example, on the Centron Ultra, it maxes out at 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, on the S Centron Plus, it maxes out at 12 gigs of RAM. Here, I've got the 8 gigabyte model, and I did not feel like I needed more RAM to carry out a task or play games better or, you know, multitask better. I didn't. Everything is still tip top top notch about this phone's camera well it's still a flagship phone save for a few ultra features of the camera that have been cut down from the s21 ultra the s21 plus does have all the features 
uh, all the software features, all the built-in camera software features that the S21 Ultra has. Save for the zooming uh, capability all the way to 100x, where the S21 Plus can only do up to 30x zoom. And has some changes in the telephoto lens, where the S21 Ultra could do 3x optical zoom. This here maxes out at 1.1x. Bits and details of me dissecting this camera are already up in a video where I compared the S21 Ultra versus the S20 Ultra from last year, but then used this as a control for the whole experiment. Check out the video, link in the description, and you'll be able to see more samples uh, from this phone. Here's where things get a little bit complicated. Let's talk pricing, okay? Now, all phones this year, all S21 lineup phones this year have dropped at significantly lower prices than last year's phones. As it is right now, looking at this phone and comparing it with the other options out there, okay? In this case, you're comparing it to phones in its ballpark, price-wise and feature-wise. That's gonna be the S20 Plus from last year and the S20 Fan Edition. It gets really hard to recommend this here phone. Let me drop this point home, you know, just come on, just a little bit. So here I've pulled up gsmarina.com, okay? And I've keyed in the S21 Plus 5G, the S20 FE 5G, and the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus, the 5G variant in it. Looking at the body dimensions, the S20 Plus and the S21 Plus are really, really similar. I think the only difference is coming in weight, where the S21 Plus is 200 grams and the S20 Plus is lighter, 186 grams. Go lower, same screen size, okay? Same dynamic AMOLED panel, save for the S21 Plus being a tad bit brighter. Lower down the page, we see the S21 Plus running on the new Exynos 2100 chipset compared to last year's, which is on Exynos 990. Last year's phone had a micro SD slot, no micro SD slot in this one. RIP. Lower is the camera and line for line, number for number, letter for letter, it's the same same camera. And thing is, they took the same wide camera, threw it in the Galaxy S20 FE, they took the same ultra camera that was in the Galaxy S20 Plus in the S20 FE and threw it in the S21 Plus. Scroll down the page, the S20 Plus and S21 Plus share the same front-facing camera. Now, here's where things get interesting, okay? Right now, you can pick up the S21 Plus for $800. At the same time, you can pick up the Galaxy S20 Plus from last year for $600. But wait, there's more. You can pick up the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition from last year in the ballpark between 530 and 550 USD. It's really hard for me as a tech reviewer to recommend a product to you that's priced here with the same specs of a phone from last year. Still a flagship phone, still a pretty good phone that you can pick up for this much money. You get me? It's so confusing why this middle child exists this year. It's quite confusing. See, last year with the S20 Plus and the S20 Ultra, there was that distinction in overkill, ultra, everything. Partly because that was the first time Samsung was actually dropping three phones at the same time. That's the first time Samsung was actually, you know, proving to us, you know, giving us this idea, this premise that, yo, we can make something that's completely overkill, something that's totally out of this world, like next level stuff okay but then again you know we've got this here the s20 plus that can do everything the flagship can do do everything you need it to do how you need it to do efficiently powerfully it's still a flagship but at a lower price just minus all the ultra bits and bobs you get it this here that line between ultra and plus is so thin it's it's blood it's not even there and that's partly because of really good software then again there's that equal treatment across the board where all s21 lineup phones don't come with a charge in the box don't have micro sd card support and where everything is so refined examples the screen that 
it doesn't really matter anymore okay i've been completely fine rocking 1080p 120hz on here without the option to bump it all the way up to 1440 120. i do have that option in the s21 ultra that's what makes the s21 ultra ultra but i don't feel lacking or like i'm missing too much looking at this and last year's s20 plus basically minus the varying refresh rate and that extra 300 million power battery that they've added into the s21 plus it's it's hard to recommend or justify the existence of this here phone and i don't know if you've noticed it most tech reviewers are concentrating or balancing their thoughts and opinions on the s21 the standard s21 and the s21 ultra that's because between those two there is a really huge gap in between but put the s21 plus and the s21 ultra and it's just potato potato you can't look at this as being that option that holds you back from spending all your money on the s21 ultra you'll be like this does what the s21 ultra does and i don't care about every ultra aspect of the s21 ultra but then again this here will make you ask so many questions that'll make you think you know what i'm better off just going full clip pulling the trigger going for the s21 ultra If you've got $800 to spend right now, pretty sure you can trade in your old phone, add $800 on it, and pick up the S21 Ultra. Think about it. Or maybe you could just pick up the S21, call it a day, or save some money and pick up last year's Galaxy S20 Plus. This is gonna be the hardest. This is this this right here is the confusing middle child. Let me know what your thoughts are about the s21 plus i i even don't know how to end this video just because of that <laughs> anyway that's it my name is hezion this is lord hezion thank you so much for watching subscribe and share if you haven't and uh catch you in the next one